Yo, 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 what's good everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be doing an unboxing and introducing you guys to Norse Spores Shroom Tech All-in-One Bag. If you've been following my channel, then you know that I like using all-in-one bags. You also know that Norse Spores, my favorite company, to get all the products that I use to grow my mushrooms. So in today's video, we're gonna take a look at their brand new all-in-one bag. If you wanna try out the Shroom Tech all-in-one bag for yourself or any of the Norse Spore products, you know they're great. Use the code Base Drop Keys. That will give you a 10% discount on any order at norsepore.com. The first thing that I'm gonna do is what I always do whenever I start working with my mushrooms. I'm gonna take my 70% ISO alcohol and I'm gonna wipe down the area that I'm gonna be working in. As you can see, I'm doing that now. Once I have that done, I'm gonna turn on my flow hood. By the way, this is an inoculate the world flow hood. If you wanna check out the other flow hoods that they have, I will put the link in the description. Now that I have my flow hood on, as you can see, I put my wire rack down. The reason I'm doing that is because we want the bags and everything to be able to sit kinda in the middle of the flow hood. So I have this wire rack to raise it up some towards the middle of the flow hood. Once that's done, I'm gonna take my all-in-one bag out of the box. And once I have it outside the box, I am gonna take the 70% ISO alcohol and I'm gonna wipe down the front of the bag or bags, however many you have. I have three right here. Now, one of the great benefits about using an all-in-one bag is you don't have to buy different products and put them together like you normally would. Normally, you would need a grain spawn bag or jar or rice or something that you can inoculate once that colonizes, you're gonna to need to have some substrate. Once you have your substrate, you need to have a bin to put it in so that way you can spawn to bulk. So as you can tell, you're gonna need different products if you're not using an all-in-one bag. The great thing about the all-in-one bag is it has the grain and substrate already in the bag and you don't have to worry about buying a max shield bin or a model tub or anything like that because the bag is the fruiting chamber. Now the next step in this process is taking your multi-spore syringe or your liquid culture syringe. I have liquid culture right here and we wanna get ready to inoculate our all-in-one bag. Now, just as a refresher for you guys, a multi-spore syringe is gonna take longer than a liquid culture syringe because multi-spore syringes, whenever you inoculate something, the spores have to come together and germinate and then start producing mycelium. Whenever you're using liquid culture, there's live mycelium already inside the syringe. So if you look at it, that stuff that you see floating in the liquid, that is live mycelium. So whenever you inoculate something with it, we don't have to worry about something coming together to germinate. It's already live mycelium inside the syringe. That's why if you use liquid culture, you're gonna be saving yourself two or three weeks. I basically pretty much only use liquid culture these days. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put the needle on the syringe. If you look the way that I do it, I make sure that I don't touch the needle at all. You see how easy it is? And then once I have the needle on there, we're ready to go. Now, right out of the pack, you don't have to do any sterilization, flame sterilization or anything like that. It's ready to go. But after we inoculate each bag, I am gonna flame sterilize it. Now, Norse Spore recommends that you use two and a half to five cc's for each bag. This is a 10 cc syringe, but the company that I use, they usually always give you more than 10 cc's. Speaking on that, if you wanna know where exactly to get your spores from, all you gotta do is come over to my Instagram, the Rookie Mycologist Instagram, click the link tree link in my bio, or check the pinned post. If you do that, you will see my only recommendation on where you should get your spores from. But at any rate, like I said, we want to put two and a half to five cc's in each bag. There's about 12 cc's in this syringe, so ideally I should put four in each bag or something close to it. If you notice, I am flame sterilizing the needle every time. I basically just hit the needle with this little torch, get it red hot, and then I let it cool down for five to seven seconds. Once it cools down, I go to the next bag. And so now that I have that done, I have all three bags inoculated. All I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put them in my incubation tent. As you guys know, AC Infinity is the official tent and ventilation sponsor for my channel. If you wanna get any of the great AC Infinity products, 
tents, ventilation. They also have lights and a bunch of other products on their website. Use the code base drop keys. That will give you a 10% discount on any order at acinfinity.com. So you can see I have the bags inside of the tent now, along with some other stuff that I'm working on. You can also see that I have that shelf moved over to the right hand side. I have another shelf that's gonna fit inside this tent on the left hand side. So that's why I don't have it directly in the center, just in case you were wondering. But all right, that's how easy it is to unbox and inoculate the Shroom Tech all-in-one bag from North Spore. I'm gonna be doing the break and shake for these all-in-one bags. I inoculated the bags on August the 11th and the footage that I'm showing you is from September the 11th, exactly a month later. The question that you're probably asking is, when should you do the break and shake? And the answer is, whenever you see your all-in-one bag or your grain spawn bag is about 20% colonized, go ahead and do the break and shake. The reason that we do the break and shake is because we're creating more inoculation points. So before I break up the bags, I'm showing you the mycelium growth inside the bags. By breaking it up and having more inoculation points inside the bag, that's gonna make it colonize even faster. So the break and shake step is not a necessary step. You don't have to do this, but if you want to save yourself some time, then you will go ahead and do the break and shake. If you've never done it before, you can actually feel balls of the hard mycelium inside the bag. You just wanna break them up and then mix it with everything else inside the bag. That's all the break and shake is. If you're using the Uncle Ben's tech, shout out the 90 second mycology, I call it the squish and mix because you know it's bags instead of a jar. That's where the break and shake comes from. Usually they're referring to a jar because you just shake the jar all the way around and that breaks and shake it. With bags, I call it a squish and mix but you get the point. So now that you know when you should do the break and shake and why exactly you should do the break and shake, give me one second, it's time to take a break. Keys in my canna, keys in my canna, keys in my canna, keys in my canna. Drop off them packs and I'm feeling like Santa. Growing these mushrooms, I'm keys in my canna. Growing exotics, they smell like bananas. I just got these poison, they came from Havana. Four or five pounds and I shipped to Atlanta. Growing blue minis, they go to Savannah. Got golden t shirts they go to Montana. I gotta get paid, I'll sell to your nana. Keys in my canna, 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 keys in my canna. Keys in my canna, keys in my canna. Drop off them packs and I'm feeling uh, like Santa. Growing these mushrooms, I'm keys in my canna. I'm drunk. taking a trip, I'll be gone for a minute. See you in the future. I'm going to be putting the all in one bags in the fruiting conditions. I did the break and shake on September the 11th. Today is October the 3rd, so it's been three weeks since I did the break and shake. So if you look at the bags, you can see that they're fully colonized now, which is great. There's one of the bags that's about 95, 96% colonized, and the rest of them are 100%, so that's good enough for me. We're gonna put them in the fruiting conditions. The first thing that I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take a rubber band, and I'm gonna put it around the body of the all-in-one bag. The reason why I'm doing this is because if I don't, I'm gonna have to worry about side pins. Whenever you put your all-in-one bag in the fruiting conditions or your monotub in the fruiting conditions or whatever you're doing, what's happening is, you're letting in fresh air, so you're getting a lot more fresh air exchange, FAE. That fresh air exchange, along with the moisture that's on top of the substrate, that's what induces our pins and really makes the mushroom start growing. So if you don't put a rubber band around the body, that fresh air will be able to get everywhere inside the bag. So that means that we're gonna have pins all over the cake, on the sides and everything. By putting the rubber band around the body, you're keeping the bag close to the substrate, which is only allowing that fresh air to hit the top of the cake. What this is gonna do is, that's gonna make the pins form on the top. If the pins form on the top, then the mushrooms are gonna grow on the top. And that's what I'm trying to do. You guys know that I've done an all one bag in the past, but whenever I did that, I wasn't able to fruit inside the bag. This time around, I want to fruit inside the bag, so we're using a rubber band. I do want to mention though, on two of them, I'm using a rubber band and on one of them, I'm going to leave it just like it is. That way we'll have a comparison. We'll see how they look whenever you use a rubber band and we'll see what happens whenever you don't. Now, once I have the rubber bands on the all-in-one bags, now it's time for us to cut the bag open to let in our fresh air. 
Whenever I did this in the past, I cut it open near the top of the bag. But what I'm gonna do this time is, I'm gonna cut it closer to the cake. There's two reasons why I'm doing it this way, or really three reasons I'm doing it this way. The first reason is by cutting it right here, the air coming in is closer to the cake, so that should help with that fresh air exchange. The second reason is, since I just told you guys that I want a fruit inside this bag, we're gonna be trying out the hoodie tick for the first time. You guys know that I was trying it on a different all-in-one bag, but that one stalled out, so I didn't get a chance to finish it. So for these bags, we're gonna try the hoodie tick. That's reason number two. And the third and final reason why I'm cutting it right here is because whenever you look at the North Spore instructions, that's what they tell you to do. <laughs> so it just makes sense to follow their instructions. It's their all-in-one bag. They probably know how to do their all-in-one bag. So I'm cutting it where they say to cut it. But at any rate, there it is. That's how you put the North Spore Shroom Tech all-in-one bag in the fruiting conditions. All right, guys, so it's 17 days later. I did the fruiting conditions on October the 3rd, and this footage is from October the 20th. Now, whenever I put a bag or a monotub in the fruiting conditions, I expect to have mushrooms in the next 14 days. So obviously, now that it's day 17, since I put the bag in the fruiting conditions, I know that I need to make a move. So what I'm doing to help me out is called fanning and misting. If you guys watch any of my mushroom grows, then you know that I don't do this step. A lot of mushroom growers, whenever they enter in the fruiting conditions, every day or every other day, they'll come and do the fanning and misting. And all that is, is just taking your flaresol bottle and misting the top of your substrate. Then they'll do the fanning. And they do the fanning by using the lid of the monotub or if it's in a bag like I'm doing, you can just bellow the bag up and down. You just wanna to try to get fresh air in there. So since you guys already know what induces the pins to start forming on your substrate is the moisture that's on top of the substrate along with that fresh air exchange. So you can see why people use fanning and misting in order to get their mushrooms to grow in more fully and just to induce the pins in general. Since it's been 17 days since I put the bags in the fruiting conditions and I don't have any mushrooms, I'm just gonna take it that I don't have enough fresh air exchange and enough moisture inside the bag in order for our pins to start forming. So because of that, I'm doing the fanning and misting. And you can see by the footage, I have my flaresol bottle, I'm spraying some inside the bag, and then I'm just bellowing the bag up and down just to get more fresh air exchange inside the bag. Now that I have that done, I'm just gonna give it a couple days and I'm gonna see what happens. So as I'm showing you what this first bag looks like, you can see that we actually have some mushrooms that are starting to grow in here. So obviously the fanning and misting is exactly what this bag needed. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna actually try to increase both of them again. And the way that I decided to do that is I'm gonna go ahead and take the next step on the hoodie tech. Whenever the mushrooms start growing inside the bag, what you wanna do is you wanna cut it along the front and cut it on the sides. Once you do that, you're gonna take the top of it and you're going to bend it to the back. So now the top of the bag looks like a hoodie. That's why they call it the hoodie tick. What I'm doing is I'm gonna go ahead and do that step right now. That's gonna ensure that I have the most fresh air exchange that I can get. Also, I'm gonna take my flaresol bottle and I'm gonna spray it once again with my flaresol bottle. So since we have some mushrooms already forming and I can see some pins already forming around the substrate as well, let's go ahead and give these bags the best environment that we can in order for us to get some more mushrooms. So that's what I'm doing right here. I am trying to get you guys some footage of the top of the substrate so you can see exactly what's going on. I do wanna mention that this rubber band is working. The pins and the little mushrooms that's in here it's all on the top. So it's doing exactly what we want it to do. Once we have a lot of mushrooms growing in all the bags, we'll really be able to see the difference in no rubber band and rubber band. But for right now, the rubber band is doing its job. Now, once I have all three bags done, I'm putting them back in my Ace Infinity tent. As far as the temperature, I have been monitoring it daily. It does stay in between 72 and 74 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's exactly where I want it. I do want to make sure that inside this tent is not drying out. So I do have a humidifier in here. I put the humidifier on 80 RH relative humidity. So once I close this tent back up, it'll keep the relative humidity around 80. 
mushrooms actually like a higher relative humidity like 90 or 95 i just put it on 80 that way the water lasts longer that's inside the humidifier now that i have my flow hood on i am going to take the 70 percent iso alcohol and I'm gonna spray my gloves, making sure that they're clean as well. After that, what I'm doing is I'm taking the all one bags out of the tent, placing them in front of the flow hood so we can take a look at what we got. And if you look at the footage, you can see that we have great growth in two of the bags. On one of the bags, the one that I have in the middle right there, you can see that we didn't get any mushrooms yet, but the misting and fanning that I did a week ago, as you can see, has paid off in two of them. I do wanna add that I did not do any additional misting and fanning. I did it a week ago in the video that you guys seen, but I did not come in and do any additional fanning or misting the past week. I just kept it inside of the tent and I made sure that the humidity was over 90, which I'll show you a little bit here in the video. But at any rate, you can see that we have some big mushrooms inside of here. You can see that a couple of the big ones have split caps. The reason for that is because I could have did this first flush, this first harvest 12 to 18 hours ago but some of the ones that you've seen here were a lot smaller and I wanted to give them plenty of time to get bigger because I knew whenever I did the flush, I was gonna take all the mushrooms at once because after I do this first flush, I want to immediately rehydrate them so that way we can start the second flush and that one bag that didn't give us any mushrooms yet, I wanna rehydrate it so that way we'll get mushrooms out of that one as well. But okay, you guys can see how great the mushrooms look. The next thing that I gotta do is I gotta do this flush. Give me one second. Call front a couple of pets, you gotta have it in the hurry. In the hurry, in the hurry, in the hurry. Call front a couple of pets, you gotta have it in the hurry. Talk a step further. Call front a couple of pets, you gotta have it in the hurry. In the hurry, in the hurry, in the hurry, in the hurry, in the hurry. In the hurry. Hey. I'm the real bullet. My name base drop, but now they call me rookie. Handful of shoes about to eat them like the cookies. Money on your head, I piss a bit like a bookie. Got a hundred thought dollars cash tucked in my hoodie. I'm all about a chicken, I ain't talking about Nike. All the broke damn days still affecting my psyche. I'm about to take over, so what you don't like me? If you disrespect me, send you to the almighty. Cancel to my grandma, what you know about pain? I really wanna face it, stay higher than a plane. Man, she gave me everything, even gave me my name. Can a business like a Dallas was keeping me sane? My daughter ungrateful, I ain't got no love for her. Like a mama, two face changed like a transformer. Yeah, I took a couple L's, but it made me strong if i put you on a list and i'm sorry you were gone my name bass drop but now they call me rookie handful of shrooms about to eat them like the cookies money on your head up it's a bet like a bookie got a hundred thought dollars cash tucked in my head i ain't worrying about nothing on the judge and the jury all this dabbing in the smoking got my vision kind of blurry in the kitchen i'm a chef and i ain't talking steph curry i'll front a couple pets you gotta have it in the hurry a couple grand is what i'm making every day but it's early if you try me i'ma see you to them gates that are pearly i'ma run through a hater like my name is todd Gurley. i'm a show time a sucker i ain't talking james worthy i put an iron out of shooting i ain't talking about a birdie buy a brick for the 20 then i sell it for the 30. I'll run down the dog and I ain't talking about a derby They gon' find you feel bullets laying dead on the gurney I'm ballin' like an athlete so I really need a jersey Got some sisters on the knees and I ain't talking about the clergy If you wanna do a deal, gotta send to my attorney Eat a handful of shoes, it's not a trip, it's a journey I put an iron out of shoot and I ain't talking about a birdie Buy a brick for the 20, then I sell it for the 30 I'll run down the dog and I ain't talking about a derby They gon' find you feel bullets laying dead on the gurney My name bass drop, but now they call me rookie Handful of shoes, about to eat them like the cookies Money on your head, I place a bet like a bookie Got a hundred thought dollars, cash tucked in my hoodie I ain't, ain't worried about nothing, I'm the judge and the jury All this dabbing in the smoking got my vision kind of blurry In the kitchen, I'm a chef and I ain't talking Steph Curry I'll front a couple of pets, you gotta have it in the hurry In the hurry, in the hurry, in the hurry, in the hurry I'll front a couple of pets, you gotta have it in the hurry In the hurry, in the hurry, in the hurry I'll front a couple of pets, you gotta have it in the hurry In the hurry, in the hurry, talk with Steph Curry I'll front a couple of pets, you gotta have it in the hurry In the hurry All right guys, so now I have the flush done. The next thing that we need to do is we need to dehydrate these mushrooms. If you're not gonna be using a dry freezer, then you need to use a dehydrator. If you don't have a dry freezer or a dehydrator, you can do it old school style. And that is just set them on a rack inside your house and let them dry naturally. Or you could put them in a paper bag, sit it outside in the sun and let them dry that way as well but I have a dehydrator, so that's what I'm gonna use. If you wanna use the same Presto dehydrator that I'm using, I will put the link in the description and I'll link it to the YouTube shopping links. If you've been watching my content lately, then you guys know that I changed up how I do my dehydrating. I like to do it at a lower temperature for a longer time now. So because these mushrooms were very big, I'm gonna start off at 12 hours. I always use 120 degrees Fahrenheit now, 
but usually it's for like eight to 10 hours. Because these mushrooms are so big, I started out with 12 hours, but then I ended up doing it for another 12 hours. So these mushrooms ended up being in a dehydrator for 24 hours. Now the next thing that I need to do is I need to rehydrate these cakes. As you can see, I have the bottom of one of my Max Shield bins inside the sink, and I'm just taking regular tap water from my sink, and you can see I'm filling up each bag with water. I thought I might have to put something on the top to help keep the cakes from floating, but to my surprise, inside these bags, they don't do any floating. So it's very easy just to fill up these bags, no problem. And make sure you fill them up to the top because we want the water to cover the entire cake. Also, you guys know that the cake is gonna start absorbing some of the water. So I did have to come back two times and actually fill the bags back up. But the main thing about this is they didn't float, so I didn't have to put anything on top of them. Now, one thing that I did have to do for the two bags with the rubber bands, I did have to let the water to the bottom of the cake. So you can see how I'm taking the rubber band and I'm stretching it out. That way some water can get down to the bottom of the bag as well. I'm gonna let these cakes soak for 24 hours and then I'll come back and get rid of this water. All right guys, so it's 24 hours later, November the 2nd or today, and the mushrooms have finished drying. What I'm doing is I have this scale right here. I'm taking the jar and we're actually going to wait and see what the dry weight is for our first flush. Now, while I'm putting the mushrooms inside the jar, let me go over something about the dry real quickly because I'm getting some questions here on YouTube and on Instagram about the drying process. It's very important that you make sure that you dry the mushrooms all the way. Some of you guys are saying that once you put them inside your jar, that they start getting spongy-like. That's because you didn't have them dry correctly. Whenever you dry them, they should be cracker dry, meaning that whenever you break it, it's gonna break just like a saltine cracker. If there's any bend, any flicks, if it's not cracking and breaking like a cracker, you need to let it dry for a couple more hours. So now that I have all the mushrooms inside of the jar, you can see that we got 30.9 grams for the first flush. I'm just gonna call it 31 grams. So we got 31 grams for the first flush. That's over an ounce. Hell yeah, I'm definitely happy with that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take two of these dry packets, I'm gonna put them in here, and that's how I dry my mushrooms right there. Don't these mushrooms look beautiful? I think they look great. I love these big, beautiful mushrooms. Hell yeah. The hoodie tech definitely works. So make sure you guys try it out whenever you get your all-in-one bags. But okay, we got our mushrooms dried and put in a jar for storage, so we're good. Now what you're looking at are the three cakes that's been rehydrated in the last 24 hours. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour out the water into the sink, and then I'll show you what each cake looks like. As I said previously in the video, I did have to come back and put water inside the bags two times, so they definitely did absorb some water. That's exactly what we want. Now that I have my flow hood on, I am gonna take the 70% ISO alcohol and I'm gonna spray my gloves, making sure that they're clean as well. After that, what I'm doing is I'm taking the all one bags out of the tent, placing them in front of the flow hood so we can take a look at what we got. And if you look at the footage, you can see that we have great growth in two of the bags. If you guys recall from the first flush, the same thing happened. So I haven't got any mushrooms from one of the bags, but the two bags keep producing. So basically I'm gonna be doing the same thing that I did with the first flush. I need to harvest the mushrooms, then I'm gonna put them in the dehydrator. I will be using 120 degrees Fahrenheit for 24 hours. The reason I'm doing that is because the mushrooms are so big. If they were smaller mushrooms, I would do 120 degrees Fahrenheit for 12 hours. I found that using less heat for a longer period of time gives me the best results, but you might wanna play with your dehydrator and see what gets you the best results. Now that I have the mushrooms dehydrating in the dehydrator, I'm going to rehydrate the cakes once again. I'm just filling them up with water right out of the tap once again, and they will soak for 24 hours before I pour it out and put it back in the tent. So like I said, I'm gonna do the same thing that I did on the first flush. Give me one second, let me get this work done, and then we'll find out what the dry weight is for the second flush. Keys in my canna, keys in my canna, keys in my canna, keys in my canna, 
Drop off them packs and I'm feeling like Santa Growing these mushrooms, I'm keys in my canna Growing exotics, they smell like bananas I just got these boys and they came from Havana Four or five pounds and I shipped to Atlanta Growing blue meanies, they go to Savannah Got golden t shirt they go to Montana I gotta get paid, I'll sell to your nana Keys in my canna, keys in my canna 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 Drop off them packs and I'm feeling like Santa See in the future, I don't see a limit I'm going off these shoes, let me make it explicit You need them, I got them, I got a good ticket I deliver these packs so it's feeling like Christmas I'm faster than Amazon, there with a quickness I'm going off these shoes, I'm not talking hibiscus They damn sure be hitting, but they not delicious eat, eat some of these, you just might see a spirit Tab on my tongue and I'm coming to visit I see every color, I'm feeling terrific She talking to me, but I see hieroglyphics The rookie, my college, don't care about no critics Wearing by my need to get you some business Did me three grams, now I'm playing with physics I, 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 I see every molecule run analytics Drop off them packs and I'm Feeling like Santa, growing these mushrooms, I'm keys in my canna. Growing exotics, they smell like bananas. I just got these poison, they came from Havana. Four or five pounds, and I shipped to Atlanta. Growing blue meanies, they go to Savannah. Got golden teachers, they go to Montana. I gotta get paid, I'll sell to your nana. Keys in my canna, 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 keys in my canna. Drop off them packs, and I'm feeling like Santa. Seeing these patterns, my life is all digital now. I'm on Saturn. I follow my instincts, I don't need a lantern. I'm taking my eagles and kill them, then plant them. Pop me some shoes and I'm going in a hurry. I'm seeing my future, my vision is blurry. The place that we're going is safe, do not worry. I feel like a ghost, but I don't see Bill Murray. One or two grams got me on a space shuttle. I see many galaxies, don't need a hope. They hitting me hard, they not coming on subtle. I'm trying to let go, but it's really a struggle. I'm feeling so small, I can swim in the puddle. I was so broken, emerged from the rubble. If I'm needing the reset, the dose might be double. It's making me balance and keeping me humble. Drop off them packs and I'm feeling like Santa Growing these mushrooms, I'm keys in my canna Growing exotics, they smell like bananas I just got these poison, they came from Havana Four or five pounds and I shipped to Atlanta Growing blue meanies, they go to Savannah Got golden teachers, they go to Montana I gotta get paid, I'll sell to your nana Keys in my canna, keys in my canna 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 Drop off them packs and I'm feeling like Santa Growing these mushrooms, I'm keys in my canna Keys in my canna All right, guys, so as you just saw, I got 25.6 grams from the second flush. These are the mushrooms right here. You can see what I was saying about the mushrooms holding their structure whenever you use less heat for a longer amount of time. But the mushrooms look beautiful. They look great. 25.6 grams. And then here is the mushrooms from the first flush. Remember, we got 31 grams from the first flush. These mushrooms also look beautiful. So the total that we got so far is 56.6 grams so far out of these two flushes. Now I have the all-in-one bags back inside the tent. You just saw that they got rehydrated and now we're gonna wait for the third flush. All right guys, so now it's a month later and what I've done is I've actually rehydrated the cakes two more times trying to see if I could get some more mushrooms. These cakes are dried out now, so we've come to the end of our shroom tech growth. Now, in all fairness, I do want to point out that for the last month, I haven't been babysitting these cakes. But honestly, the temperature sometimes probably got a little bit too low for any mushrooms to grow. I've honestly been focusing on other things. If you guys don't know, I just recently bought my first house. I'm going to start moving in next week. And so obviously I was looking at a lot of houses and a lot of different properties, trying to find the house that I like the most. And so once I did that, I did buy it. But after that, I also been looking at rental properties and I'm about to buy one of those as well. And so my focus was not on growing mushrooms or 420 or any of it. And so I know sometimes the temperature was under 70, which is not ideal for growing mushrooms. So I possibly could have got more from this particular run. But after the second flush, I was busy doing real estate. I do want to point out also that you cannot compare this to the last all-in-one bag flush that I did, I fruited that in a mono tub. Remember for this grow, I specifically tried to fruit inside the bag. 
because it's less surface area, I'm gonna get less of a yield inside the bag. So don't compare it to my other all-in-one bag grow. It's not the same. But all right, guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. The new content will be starting in a couple weeks once I get moved into the new house. Also, guys, if you wanna support the channel, I do have some brand new designs on the website, therookiemycologist.com. Come over and check them out. And don't forget, if you spend at least $25 on the site, use the code ROOKIE, and that will give you a 10% discount on my website at therookiemycologist.com. If you like my music, come subscribe to the Bass Drop Keys music channel. I'm dropping a new song every two weeks or less on the channel, so come subscribe to my music channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate all of you. And until I see you guys the next time, peace guys. Rookie out.